copy of the recording or reviewing it, feel free to notify myself or Lucy after all this. All right, Lucy, I think we're at a point where we can start. Okay. How do you so feel? Go. Good to go? Yes, yeah, I'm good. Awesome. All right. Well, everybody, welcome to Residency in Review, starring myself and my good friend, Lucy H. West. Today, we will be having a conversation about her residency in Spain, which she just came back from, how her art has evolved since, after she came back from that journey, and just overall, just learning about her, excuse me, learning about her journey in general as to how she got here and who she wants to become. Um, first and foremost, let me introduce myself. My name is Morgan Lloyd. I am the Mellon Curatorial Fellow at the Philadelphia Museum of Art, which means I work in the American Arts section as kind of a junior curator, as well as working at the African American Museum, where I have the pleasure of teaching about the lives of African Americans in the city of Philadelphia and in the tri-state area from the 1600s all the way to today. As we have a few more people walking in, I just want to say once again, Please make sure that your mics are muted when you enter in and thank you, thank you. All right, Lucy, I want to highlight you because today is your day. Lucy is a phenomenal artist and overall a phenomenal human being. She is a mental health advocate on social media. She reminds me to check my mindset every Monday and if you don't know what I mean by that, I highly recommend you check out her Instagram after this. She's a phenomenal uh, abstract artist and her work normally revolves around relationships to the mind, body and spirit by ways of color. And she wants you, the audience to also find ways to interpret her work. So though she and I might be talking about something, your interpretation is just as valid. And on that same note, I want to highlight the fact that this is a Q and A session. So though your mics are off at this time, I highly recommend that you DM me because at the end, I'm going to ask Lucy a couple of questions. So feel free to do so. And with that, I wanna pass the mic over to the fantastic Lucy H. West so she can begin telling us about who she is, her journey, and just how awesome she is. Go ahead, girl. Thank you so much, Morgan. <laughs> You're and welcome. thank you all for coming. Seriously, I'm so excited to share so much. And I'm grateful that you're here because without you, this is nothing. Okay. All right, let's start. So get this presentation going. First, I would like to just give you a brief introduction to who I am. So uh, let's start with educational background, but I'm going to keep it short because I want to talk about what I did abroad. All right. So I have, other than me just drawing on my own since I was super young, I studied art in Tokyo, Japan, which is where I grew up. I was in elementary school, middle school, and high school there. So I did regular art classes throughout. For college, I went to Dickinson College, which is in Central PA, and I studied art there. So I do have a degree in studio art. And I also, um, during my four years, I had an opportunity to study in Rome through the Temple University Rome program for one year. So I also have experience studying art in Rome, which is very nice. And so that's, I went to school, cool. After school, I moved to Philadelphia and in Philly, I had the privilege of being a part of the Barnes Foundation, which is a world-class collection of art in Philly. And I worked there for three years and let me just say, it's an educational institution, so I learned a lot about art there. So I could say that I'm a proud student of the Barnes. And this is from my last day there, right before I was going to go to Spain. So cool. I studied art in school and in institutions and out of institutions because living every day and being involved in the art scene and just befriending artists, curators, art historians, art appreciators, through all that, I'm constantly studying art. Okay, next. Let me just give you an update of the things that I've been up to so you know what I'm doing. Other than trying my best to be a part of shows and attending shows, being a part of shows and going to museums and meeting up with other artists. Um, this year, I actually did my first ever show that I organized, curated from ground up along with two other artists, Evan Greenswag and Aaron B. Cohen. 
And we did this show in April. So let me just show you some of this, what it looks like. I think it's loading. Here we go. So this is part of what it looked like. Um, the show was up for two months, starting April until June 2nd. And the idea was, is that since all shows were online because of the pandemic, I wanted to organize an in-person show because I truly believe that art has to be seen in person. Here are other detailed photos of what the show looked like. And it was a success, it worked well because people came and people came together to see art in person. They also got to interact with each other. And overall it was good because audiences told me that it, they felt safe and they were happy to be a part of a community again after being isolated for so long. So that was fun. Okay, what else? Oh yes, also recently um, one of my paintings, this one called Looking Like a Snack, was acquired by Penn Medicine and I had the privilege of being a part of this show, social justice initiative that they started in incorporating young local artists um, from marginalized social groups to be have their art shown in somewhere like UPenn, which a lot of history. So I think John is here, this sweet, sweet man who let me be the pilot program for his initiative. And that was a very good time. So shout out to John. Thank you so much. Okay. Previously made work. So right now, a lot of my art is about mindfulness, visualizing body and soul connection, meditation. It's basically just about making sure you're connected with yourself and your environment and just kind of being one with yourself, which connects to checking in on your mental health because as people, we all need that. It's really hard to be a person sometimes. So a lot of my art is about that. Here are some images of the work that I've made before um, I went to Spain. So here we have some images. This is Julie's. Hi, Julie. I think you're here. Lucy, before you carry on, can you dive into a little bit more about what your art is supposed to convey, just as the artist to, let's yes. say, people who aren't into art? Of course. So... And talking about art is so hard. Basically, I like to make, I mean, these images are kind of kind of abstract, kind of representational. I kind of like to be in the realm of like, you might be able to see something, but maybe not so much, but it's up to your interpretation. So I really um, get a lot of value from people telling me what my art is about. And through that, I could connect with myself, my subconscious that I might not have noticed and to the viewers who bring new perspective and us being connected through the art. So that's what I really value. And that's what I'm trying to convey here. This work, okay. This is the, these are the last paintings that I made um, right before my visit. And this diptych is actually in Tokyo right now. Japan shut down. But if you ever do go to Tokyo, go check them out. They are in a bar called Ricky. Shout out to my mom who started her own bar mid pandemic. But this is what my work has looked like, just so you know. Okay, let's move on. Madrid, Spain. That's where I went. Here's a map of Madrid on Google Maps. You see the red um, right there? That is Madrid, which is also the capital of Spain. And here you see everything saved in the center, which were all food related or art related that I saved. And I actually stayed right up here, which is in a little suburb called Mingo Rubio. And it only took about 20 to 25 minutes to get um, into the center. So it's super convenient. Here's a screenshot of me there where I lived on Google. And I stayed with this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful family. So I was there for five and a half weeks and I did homestay to do cultural exchange, language exchange, so I could really immerse myself to be a part of the local culture. And obviously I'm a tourist, but not just tourist stuff, you know, I could like be in it. And they were such a wonderful family. I took a lot of photos with them, spent a lot of time with them. And um, the only thing that 
I had an issue with was that we don't have a single photo of us all together. <laughs> so we have all of these things happening. And it was really thanks to them that I had a great time there because if it wasn't for them, um, yeah, my, my visit would not be the same. So I'm very grateful for them. Shout out to them. Os quiero mucho. And if you haven't noticed, they have a husky and his name is Mango. And he looks very much like Matthew McConaughey. Okay, artist <laughs> residency time. This is what I did while I was there, okay? Um, the first thing I needed to do was really absorb everything around me. And for me, that's very visual because I'm a visual artist. So what I did was take a bunch of photographs of where I was walking around and also did some sketches. So these photos are all um, just to set the scene in Madrid, things that I thought were interesting that I took photos of. These are disposable um, camera photos and also just pictures with my phone. Because Here's your directions. I think it's... Um, Here. Here's the directions. Uh, <laughs> I don't need help. You don't need directions. Nina. No. That's Here, how about this? Give me one second and what I can do is I can make sure I everyone is muted. <laughs> I knew it though, I knew it. This was expected. One moment. Okay, cool. Good. One second, Lucy. Okay, we're good. There we go, let's keep going. <laughs> I just, I knew my grandma, that was gonna happen. All right, anyway, <laughs> okay. going back, um, I was taking, so a lot of disposable camera photos, which are also super exciting because you don't know what you get until the end. But here we have some photos. So as you see, a lot of structures. And so I started sketching them also, which I haven't done in so long. I haven't done real still life, sketches of any sort. Here's um, an Egyptian temple that remained in Madrid. Yes, sketches. So that was really fun. I mean, it was really just kind of my way to absorb what was around me and also re, you know, like record them and then reevaluate and understand them. So sketching and photos is what I really went for. And then I started sketching people naturally again very art 101 sketching structures and people gestures which i haven't done in so long and that was also pretty exciting just you know stalking people at cafes and <laughs> drawing them here's a nice couple okay so that's how i started i just made sure that i was always doing something so i didn't go into a pause even though i wasn't sure what i wanted to create as something final there, obviously, just got there. You need to kind of experience life before you can make art from it. Um, but I was just making sure that I was doing these simple things to keep my head space in a creative space and also just keep my hands moving. And I'm motivated to, you know, get myself going and make art. Museums. Madrid had such an abundance of art museums, galleries, street art on the scene. It was really cool, but and I went to so many of them, but we're gonna focus on the Prado today because this is where I was directly inspired, which we will continue on later, what I made. Here's another picture of the entrance in the ticket office. The only thing about the Prado was that I couldn't, where you're not allowed to take photos of anything, of any of the art inside. So I have these two pictures of the entrance and I needed to draw which was also kind of cool because I was already drawing and I hadn't sat in a museum to sketch paintings or other works that I've seen in a while. So here are two El Greco works that I saw. Um, just these compositions and they're so big. Like I was just excited to see them in person but the compositions really spoke to me. A lot of these religious works control the viewer and how they look at everything because it's, they're controlling how you look at everything. And then ultimately to this figure that they are praying to or meditating to, which does relate to my work, even though it's not um, as literal. Here's another one, um, The Glory by Titian, which I was like, oh, 
when like when I saw it I was just like I need this I need this in my life so I was really happy but yeah so again kind of doing gestures so it's all still connecting regular sketches that I was doing daily to these kind of very gestural figures and then all of it was you know coming together in my mind which will eventually lead to what I made at the end um, I did say that you're not allowed to take any photos inside, which is true, but I needed a memory. So it didn't deter me to take these super secret. Look at the illegality of these photos. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> but I just want to share because I did take photos just so I know I was there, but nothing crazy. You know, they have pictures on their website. Okay, studio time. So now I feel like things are coming together and I was able to make art. Here is a super DIY studio setting that I made so I don't get the family's floor dirty inside. He, okay, before I go there. Um, so when I went abroad, I limited what I was gonna make art with because I needed to be able to travel back with them. So I brought, I bought paper there, but basically what I did was wash on paper and that's it. And those are both new mediums for me. I usually paint on canvas with mostly acrylic and oil. So this was new. And that was kind of an exploration in itself to making art here. Oh yes. And I bought these water soluble oil crayon things, which were also cool to work with there. So that's what I was working with. Oil, those soluble crayon things and gouache on paper. Oh, and here's my studio setting outside when it was nice enough to sit outside and not inside. And that's a picture of me plotting, actually plotting exactly to do this presentation. So thank you for being a part of it. And these are pictures of me drawing and making art in my studio space. Okay, finally, finally, we're here. So while I was there, I started and finished three paintings. This was the first one that I did. It was specifically for the family that I gifted to them um, before I left as a thank you. And I started it first because I needed to make sure that I finished it on time. <laughs> I couldn't leave without doing that. So this, let me get some details in here. Yes. Um, this is the first painting I made and it was pretty much, I mean, it was very much inspired by the, the family themselves. It was a lot about motherhood and a new kind of love that I'm not, I have motherhood in my life, but I'm always a part of it. It was so interesting to see kind of objectively, but then also being a part of this entirely new family that, ha that hasn't to do with me. It doesn't do with me directly. So it was kind of like, being around moms all the time, I'm usually not. So that was very new and an unexpected but wonderful experience that I had while I was there. So this painting I made for them and you could kind of see how they are directly, kind of come directly from what I was making prior to my travels because I was like doing what I knew but relating it to them. So you could kind of see the similarities in the structures here but still using a new medium. So I think there's some things that changed, but it was interesting. So this was the first painting that I started and completed. And then we have two more. Let's see. Here's another one. Okay. So here, I kind of started to feel more free with how I was doing things, because I'm just experimenting, you know, just seeing what comes from things. But a major inspiration in how things changed in my work is that I was looking, I was drawing people and looking at images in gestural form. And all of my work prior was about kind of visualizing the state of body soul connection while it's happening, which is for me, I meditate. So it was kind of, and when I meditate, I'm pretty static. But then you see all these paintings where people are like, moving and there's a lot of movement and gestural things and but they're all still like reaching out to this figure or idea or whatever that they're praying to so I realized that you don't have to necessarily be static 
to express what I was trying to express. So I kind of did these, which were directly inspired by the sketches that I made while I was in the Prado looking at Titians and Rubens and all these crazy masterworks. Now, Lucy, before you push forward, um, as someone who has witnessed your work in person, I know that it's something that's pretty experiential. Excuse me, it's something to be experienced. Let's go with that phrase. Um, on top of the vibrant colors and the gestures, there's typically textural elements as well. And sometimes when you look at a certain angle, things sparkle, but it doesn't highlight here in the 2D. Could you describe it a little bit deeper? And so the audience can have a slower look of this piece. Okay, thank you. True, good point. Right, I mean, it's a pain. That's why I got to see art in person. But yes, a lot of my works, I would incorporate um, things like clay and I'm, I paint really thickly. So there's a lot of texture. I've also made my own solutions to kind of like pop up and not just textural, but like glitter and things like that. So here, there, are, there is also some shimmer in these, um, especially kind of like the gold going through. There's also some purple shimmeriness going on. Um, I wish I could just show you, but let's see. Maybe you can see. Not much, but through the use of kind of piling on gouache and the crayon material that I bought, I was still able to express texture through layering and through kind of viscosity. So really watering some pigment down, really using them intensely. And then in that way, I was trying to kind of not translate, but basically do what I want to do with a newer medium, I would say. Does that make sense? All right. Okay, cool. This is the other one that I made. Also, very experimental, same, similar concept was just kind of directly absorbing what was around me and doing what I can with them. And um, I definitely, again, I, I process my work through feedback a lot of times. So I've already shown some friends here and there and um, people don't, did tell me that like the way that I used detail was different, the way that I, used certain colors might have been different. And that was cool to hear too, because it was, you know, everything was new. I was in a new environment. I was using new materials. I was with new people that I never met in my life. I was discovering things within me that I was like, ah. So it was good. <laughs> it was good. And um, that Lucy, is pretty for much this it. piece, um, yes. again, as someone who's experienced and watched you on Instagram make your work, just to take someone on the journey with you, um, did you put your hands on this one? Fun fact for everyone, Lucy is known for quite literally touching her works and adding to Always. it. Did you do Always. that in this one as well? Always. Yes, there are a lot of hands. There's a lot of touching in my work <laughs> and in person and hands, images of hands in my work, because I think that's really like a direct portal to what makes the work and the person making it who is me and hand hands in general in life. You know, it's like, there's, there's just so much symbology to it. But um, yes, if you could see on this left image here, those little dots um, up top, the green dots below the orange line, those are my fingerprints. You can't really see them here, but I usually include something hand related. Thank you for picking that up. <laughs> yeah, I would say. And also just kind of finger painting sometimes, not always, I usually use a brush. Anything else, Morgan? Hmm. I do have a couple questions, but are you done with the slides for now? I am. Excellent. Here we are. And here we here's are. actually a picture of um, the family who framed my painting and it looks so nice in this golden frame. So this That's is a gorgeous. picture from them. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think it's perfect timing. My first question along with someone in our audience, my friend James. Hi, James. <laughs> Um, I was going to ask the same question as him. Uh, it's related to meditation and mindfulness and your general spirituality and how it relates to your work. 
So people here, they may know Lucy for a number of things, whether it be from the Barnes, be it from her social media Mindfulness Mondays, or perhaps maybe through her art, but there's this general theme of spirituality. And for what reason is this a subject that you focus on? How is it relevant to you? And how does it relate to your process? Um, it's everything, honestly, it's everything. <laughs> Um, spirituality is an interesting word that I just use because I wouldn't say I'm religious, but, and I pertain to any specific religion, but very spiritual. And I was also raised in Japan, which is an interesting kind of culturally, it's very spiritual, but it's not like you necessarily pray to a specific God. So it's just kind of like you know, being grateful for everything and just believing in putting good in the world and good things will come back to you. Very general idea like that. And also I have been meditating for a while now, which has helped me significantly with my mental health. And all I'm trying to do in life and in art, because art is life, <laughs> is just be happy. Like, do my best and it's a lot of work to be happy but like put in that work to just keep myself in check make sure I'm good and do as much as I can to spread that positivity because it's never loud enough it's never loud enough in the world so it naturally translates into my art because I'm always so focused on making sure that I'm taking care of myself and I'm good and I'm growing to be a better person and like these are just it's kind of how I just it's all my focus is always on that so I'm talking about it I'm doing it I'm making art about it I'm connecting with people through it and um it's pretty broad but it it is a very consistent theme in my life I would say thank you for that question good question thank you James for also being perfectly you, in time with that question <laughs> um also I just want to ask uh Thematically, it seems like your work often relates to the feminine body and in this time, or this specific instance, uh, children as well. And you mentioned that word motherhood. Was that a conscious decision? Now I know you're intuitive, so I'm not in, entirely in what, sure. A conscious decision in what? In showcasing the feminine bodies and the children. Was that something you were actively looking for while you were in Spain or something that you want to use and relate to while you were in Spain? No, it was such an unex, I mean, it makes sense. You know, I was going to stay with a family, but I didn't know what that meant until I was mm -hmm. there. And I was like, oh my God, I'm with people who create and like take care and like raise people. <laughs> and like, it was um, so fresh because obviously I'm, a daughter and I've been raised by an amazing mother and par parents in general not just motherhood like but being in Spain with this family and also the community that they were part of where there are a bunch of families and all their kids and all their so many moms and I was like I never been around so many moms and just hung out with them <laughs> so it was definitely not a conscious thing but it was like such a such a nice and fresh new perspective that I usually don't have um in my life here that came along with it so I just absorbed all of that and yes 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 intentional and well intentional always but like conscious and subconscious both mm. Mm -hmm. okay yes. so at this point I'm going to turn it to our audience questions which are now flooding in but first I'm going to turn it to John's question which was uh what why did you choose film photography as opposed to digital while you were in Madrid? I took a lot of pho uh, photos on my phone too. So digital, so many, so many, so many. But I did bring two film cameras because it's all, there's always this like excitement of, you know, I mean, that's what I just did two days ago was go to CVS and grab my developed photos and look through them. And I was like, oh my God, yes, that's right. I went here and I did this. And when I'm taking the photos, I'm doing my best, but you don't know how they turn out. So it's always like an exciting element. And there's some, you know, there's a good taste to those things, but I also did take a lot of digital photos too. So I did both. Okay. Let's see. 
the follow-up question. One second, because they're now flooding in. <laughs> One moment, everybody. Yes, people ask questions. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, someone wanted to ask how we connected. So do you want to explain the story? Or should I no, tell Morgan, the story? You, you tell them. Okay, well, Lucy is one of those cool friends that you meet in life and you realize you're on the same journey. We have been on the come up together and we ironically met at the Barnes. Uh, she was a fantastic visitor services person in the time in which she was there. And I was but a humble barista for Constellation uh, Culinary. And we both kind of set this vision out that we were going to succeed in the art world in Philadelphia. And lo and Not behold- but yeah. starting off in Philly. Starting off in Philly. Mm -hmm. You are correct. <laughs> and again, lo and behold, uh, we've known each other for what, three years? Right. Yeah. And three years later, here we both are kind of on the opposite side of the arts, kind of living through the things that we always set out to be. And if there's one thing that's amazing about Lucy and my relationship is every time either of us even slightly succeeds or posts anything about it, we will DM each other and be like, oh, we are the art world. This is success. <laughs> we will take over this. And I'm honored to be the moderator of her talk, but also just want to highlight how grateful that's I am to have this person as a friend. <laughs> See, you're such a good storyteller. This is why I wanted you to say it. That's great. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so honored. Um, so someone asks, how long does it take for you to make a sketch or to kind of dial it in? How long did it take you to sketch, let's say the people you were, as you like to say, stalking, but people watching <laughs> while uh. in Spain? I don't know. I mean, it really depends. And I hadn't done it in so long. Like that temple drawing that I did was like, I was sitting there for an hour and a half trying to figure out proportions. <laughs> but people, I tried to like 10 minutes, maybe a little less. It depends on how much detail I want to go into, but it's as much as I could focus, honestly. I just want to, you know, I get distracted very easily. So as long as I could focus, I will try to. And then if the person moves, I'm like, ah, that's done. So that for those sketches, in terms of sketching for these paintings of some sort, I usually kind of go directly into it. The only thing that I would, I would sketch are tiny thumbnails that aren't even, it would just be for composition and where I want to place things. But I kind of go into it and just see what happens and go with the flow usually. Let's see. Ah. Ah Young Kim asks, how big are your pieces? Um, that really depends because, oh, it depends. Those ones I made in Spain, the one on paper, I should know, but I'm so bad with inches. This big, maybe, the bigger <laughs> ones. This painting behind me is three by four. The one that just went to um, Pen Med was like, it was like six feet by, what was it? Like 10 or something? So it really, it really depends. And I've also made paint for a while. I was making paintings that were all this big and I made like 70 of those. So I kind of, in terms of scale, I go everywhere, everywhere, whatever works in the moment. Okay, let's see. Have to sift through some more questions. One moment. Ah, okay. Oh, hi, Trina Washington. Uh, Trina asks, in reflection, which piece of your art helped you discover something about yourself and what was it? Great question. That is such a hard question, which means it's a good question. Um, which one? I mean, all of them, honestly. That might not be a satisfying answer, but anything that I make, whether I end up liking them or not liking them, is still, it's just consistently doing and learning from all of them. So, you know, and also kind of just trusting the process is something that naturally, like, I'm practicing naturally because you never... You don't know how things are going to turn out. So 
rather than seeing a completed work and being like, oh, like I changed or I learned something. It usually happens in the process of me making that and being like, oh my God, this looks terrible. Or, oh, it's looking good. And then I mess it up later. Or, but it's that, it's that process and journey is where usually I've already acquired or learned something new or, you know, I'm like discovering something new. So all of them. And that's why I keep try my best to maintain somewhat of a consistent studio practice because you just have to kind of keep doing it, I think is the answer. That's my answer. Please accept it. I think we all accept it. <laughs> Thank you. Now, have you always used color in such a vibrant way? Um, no. Yes, thank you. Thank you for calling it a vibrant way. Um, yes, I guess the past four years or so I have been using a lot of color. Before that I was doing, not even before, throughout I would just kind of stop and just do ink drawings on white paper and that's it. But it seems like I have a lot of artist friends who also kind of go through that. You use color and then you just stop for a while because you need to just focus on something else, you know, the other elements of art. But um, mm. yes, a lot of color recently, which is cool. And I like, I need, I, need to, I need to use it. I've tried doing things like, oh, let me limit my palette to like three colors. And I'm like, no, I can't. So it's, it's kind of what's exploding out of me right now. Um, yes. All right, are there any more questions from our fantastic audience? feel free to type them in the chat. Thank you so much for questions. I feel so happy that people ask questions. <laughs> very happy everyone is here. Very happy that everyone is engaged. Um, let's see. First and foremost, Lucy, coming from me as well. Um, I've often had conversations with people relating to the word freedom and what it means to them. And I want to throw it at you. In your art, do you feel free? And if yes. so, why? Yes, yes, yes. Frida, that's, that's, I didn't, I mean, I didn't know any of the questions you were going to ask me, but I didn't know you were going to ask that. <laughs> Freedom is such an important concept for me. Like, I need, I need to, I need to feel free. And for me, that just means that I could do whatever I want to do. And I try to do that in my art too. So... Yeah, because you can't limit yourself, you know? And that, that's also important to experience freedom. You need to not inhibit yourself from feeling that too. So, and that also connects to the kind of the spirituality aspect that we were talking about is just being in the moment and really experiencing that moment is the most you could do. And the more you could do that, the freer you are, I think. And I feel a lot of that through making the art and also my art is about that. So it's like this positive, you know, cycle, I would say. But yes, freedom, 100%, 100%, always. I have a question from Linda. Do colors symbolize anything for you? For instance, a specific color, do you use it to communicate something to us or yourself? Yes, um, more so feelings. I would say, but like real feelings. It's not like I use blue because that means sad and you know, red means this. It's, I'm not addressed, like I'm not assigning definitions to colors, but it's just like, I don't know. You, you, you see it and you feel something and you might not be able to identify that, but that's, that's enough. So in that way, it's very intuitive because I make sure I make my own colors to start with because I would be like, I need a warm purple or something like that and I'll make it. But the way I choose those colors are never planned. I just look at what I'm making, where I'm at at the moment. And then usually I would be like, oh, this needs green or something like that. And then I would make that and then apply it and then kind of like be with the work and see what I feel and see what it's telling me. And then it'll just kind of naturally occur. So in that sense, colors have a bunch of meaning but nothing specific um, that I could tell you, except maybe one consistent thing 
has been that usually when I, a lot of these are also auras. Like when I'm putting in figures, it's the aura that they're emitting, like the color of that person and the energy they hold, whether they identify with it or whether I experience it from them. Yellow, usually if I include myself in it, it's very yellow or kind of green. And that has been consistent for me and my own kind of expression, specifically if it's like, you know, that, that figure is me. But other than that, yes, very intuitive. Mm. Ooh, Ayang has a great question. Yes. What advice would you give to young high school artists who might be, fear might be scared to go into this career? <laughs> just have to be like I'm gonna do it I don't hey. I, that's what I, like I'm scared but I just want to have fun and this is and I want to do what I want to do so that's the only thing um that you gotta do is just be like okay I'm, I'm gonna do this and I have to enjoy it and just you know make the most out of it because everyone tells you no to arts everyone everyone <laughs> for you know, reasonable, like, excuses, you know what I mean? But, and also, yeah, you just have to, you just have to kind of just make sure that you enjoy it and then just do it for yourself. Like, that just reminded me that my middle school, no, not middle school, elementary art teacher hated me, and she said my work was terrible, but I always liked drawing, so I just, like, <laughs> did it anyway, <laughs> and I'm happy I did, so... You just have to believe it within yourself. Mm. You know what I mean? That would be my advice. Speaking That's what I tell myself every day. So, mm. Speaking of middle school, uh, Lucy, we ever so gracefully skipped over a very cool uh, part of your life, at least to the average everyday American person. Uh, you are not from here. You are from Japan. You're from Tokyo, Japan. And yes. my question is, is your work in Japan? And if so, where? Yes. So it's in Ricky, the bar, which my mother started literally four or five months ago, mid pandemic, she's doing well. And the diptych that I, um, that was there earlier is in there. And I also sent her 40 paintings which are all this size and they are covering the walls. So it's a cool little fusion of my work exhibited in her space that she creates. So it is there in Tokyo. Otherwise, most of my art is currently here in Philly, very focused on Philly because I'm here and I wanna be involved in what's right around me usually. Okay. I see two hands that are raised. If you could just type it into the chat or directly to me, I can happily answer your questions and I will take pause so that you can type away. Uh, let's see. Lucy, could you maybe describe your exhibition at Cherry Street Pier? What was it yes. like to have people experience your art on a grand scale amidst the 2020 pandemic? It was awesome. It was so amazing. Um, should I go back to it? Feel free. You can set the scene. All right, let's go back. It was a great time because, I mean, at that point, it was already a year of COVID and everything was online, obvious, ob for obvious reasons. But Cherry Street, uh, Cherry Street Pier was a really, really nice and cool venue photos <laughs> let me just go there i can't multitask if you could tell Take here you go time. okay um because okay as you see here the ceiling this was an old um what are those things called pier it's a pier it's a mm -hmm. what is it a dock that's not the word it kind of yeah it's a covered pier a place <laughs> where boats would land a dock of sorts right You're it's on it. open it's open that's all i'm trying to communicate is that it's open so behind those walls there it's like you see the river we're, we're on the river basically open air so that's the reason why we were able to so there's a roof so it's not weather dependent however it's completely open enough airflow and very spacious 
And that was why we were able to organize an in-person opening, which honestly, we were definitely one of the first, if not the first in Philly to do a in-person opening for Art Again. And first for a lot of people, at least, because people told me that, oh, I haven't been to any sort of community event in over a year. And so that really made me happy because that was the whole point is to just like connect people and through art. It's the best way, you know what I mean? <laughs> so that was a good time. And we everything we exhibited there was work that all of all three of us made since the pandemic started. So, you know, it was just a lot of artists processing, living through this situation and expressing themselves and then the people coming together and experiencing again, those same things and with each other. So what was the question? I you just, kind of described it. I was yeah, just, you could describe what it was exactly like. What it was, that you was did. it. it you was painted awesome. the picture, thank you. It was awesome, that was so great. Very uh, grateful for all these people. Emma asks, what is the best piece of art you've created? <laughs> Can you label one? Um, <laughs> Can you describe it to us? Or like the best. theme, is it related to any of the themes we've talked about today? Yes, yes, yes. Definitely all of this, newest work, newest work, not this. I mean, yes, this, but okay. Usually what happens is the, mo the newest work is most exciting. And I'm like, and if I'm happy about it, I'll be like, yeah. And then we'll spend some time together. And then I'm like, okay, you could leave now. Like if you want to, if you want to go to someone else, like if someone wants to buy you, go ahead, like, you know, or go out to the world. Like we don't need to be together anymore because I get used to it. So usually the work that I'm most excited about and I like the most is the most recent work that I haven't spent a lot of time with yet. But as a theme in my career, what I'm making now, I'm definitely the proudest about and the most connected with because here, this is, so this, for example, this is from 2018, which is already three years ago. And this was my most exciting work for a long time because it's huge. And this was like the first time that I really felt like I made a painting that I was happy about but you could kind of see how different my work is now. And it keeps changing because I'm changing as a person. So I feel like this theme of what I'm making now, I'm finally able to translate who, like my identity and what I'm, what I'm doing in life and all of that. And we're really in sync. It's not like I'm me and I'm painting, I don't know, whatever, still lives of chairs. You know what I mean? Like I really feel connected with this work and I feel one with it. So I'm the most proud of what I'm making now, I would say. I went off on that, but thank you for asking that question because yes, it's good. It's good. I'm glad you went off. Uh, that was appropriate and great. And we got a great glimpse of who you are as a person even more. Uh, someone asks, here comes that big question. Lucy, what is next for you? Do you have plans on what you're going to do with your art in the future? Duh, I'm just <laughs> gonna keep doing it. <laughs> and um, yeah, just keep doing it. I mean, the ultimate goal is just to keep making art because I love making art and then connecting with people, which is another thing that I love doing and ideally through my art. So more shows, more events, more talks like this. And that's why I appreciate every single one of you here because without you, like this is what I wanna do is just connect with people. And well, my goal for 2022 is to have a solo show because the 2020, 2021 show, which was the show at Cherry Street Pier, I was able to do with two other great artists and the three of us worked together to put all of that together. But I want to, you know, now I'm like, all right, I gotta make work. And then I wanna do a solo show during the year 2022. So stay tuned. No plans yet, 
you are the first to know that I'm declaring this and it has to happen. So that's next, that's next. Ayang has a follow-up question. Yes. Where can we see your art in person? Oh my God, um, where? Perhaps now, perhaps in the near future. Come, come, come to my, come to my studio. Um, I will let me know and I will make sure it's, it's appropriate for a person to enter. It's crazy in there. And I could pair it and I could um, show you all the work in person. Or you could come over. I have at least three or four paintings in this house. Or I'm actually gonna go to this restaurant called Liberty Grounds next week because I have a painting there right now, but I still haven't visited since my painting got there. So I'm gonna go do that. For those who are local, Liberty Grounds is on Girard near Girard College. Cool, thank you, because I don't know. You're welcome, yes. you're welcome. Uh, okay, so full circle question, and I will leave it at that unless more of our audience have questions. Mm -hmm. But after your journey in Spain and mm -hmm. looking at the work you created after leaving it, how has your work now that you're back or how do you intend for your work now that you're back to evolve? What did you take um, with you? Oof, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. All I could do is show you. All I could do is show you, I mean, I haven't made anything yet. It's been kind of, um, yes, I just been, I just been kind of readjusting to being back and trying to come up with a new cycle. Um, but I am excited because yes, I was, before I went to Spain, I was in New York for three days. I went to the Whitney, the Guggenheim, MoMA, I was in Spain for five and a half weeks. I went to all of these museums and galleries. And then before I came back, I was in Berlin for three days. And I went to more museums and I've been in Philly going to galleries and I'm just been absorbing all of this art. And I'm like, I really wanted to do this um, with Morgan first. And I could only do one thing at a time. So I haven't been to the studio to make like big work, but I'm anticipating what's gonna come because I've just been absorbing everything and I'm like, ah, and I need to let it all out. So, but um, stay tuned. Look, mm -hmm. there's, my, there's, my, there's my Instagram handle. I'm planning to be active again because I'm gonna be making a lot of work and I could only anticipate exciting things. And you could tell me what's changed. So, because I could only just free flow and let, let things happen. So please tell me. But yes, that's my answer. All right, if there's any follow-up questions, I highly recommend that you start typing away. Uh, otherwise, we might be able to call it at this time. And I highly recommend to follow up Lucy. Uh, check out her Instagram. Her art is amazing. It's so fun to kind of watch her as she's in her process. She takes you to the studio and makes these absolutely phenomenal videos coincide with music. And again, every Monday, Mindset Monday. If there's one thing you could take from Lucy, if not from the energy that comes from her art, is her fantastic energy as a person, and she'll remind you to take care of yourself along the way. And thank you, Morgan. Morgan is always doing so much all over Philadelphia, but she likes to she likes to kind of keep it on the down low because she likes to like kind of stay mysterious like that. But You'll see her around. And she also said that she's gonna start telling people all of the amazing things she's doing, which is great. So thank you, Morgan, so much for helping, um, just letting me do this with you. I'm so grateful to be able to work with you. And thank you all so much for tuning in because my art and my life isn't complete without the people connecting with me and with it. And our shared love for all of this bright positivity in the world. So thank you. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you everybody for dropping by. Thank you for all your questions. And Lucy, thank you for being such a great friend in general. And I think as someone Lewis 
highlighted it's amazing to watch you evolve as an artist so I'm honored to be part of this journey I'm gonna keep going forward. you're never gonna stop we're not no, gonna stop no that's Until not what I we die. do there you go yes <laughs> every day <laughs> thank you guys have a good night have a thank good thank you night. everyone thank you so take care stay safe bye